Hey, happy Thursday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft for about an hour or so. And we work on a project from beginning to end every evening here. So we are working on the Charming Chevrons Quilt by Krista Watson of Krista Quilts, and the link for that pattern is in here. We are almost done. We're working on, almost done piecing. We are working on the back of the quilt right now, and all we have left is to sew the top and bottom borders on. So we are... Uh, we pinned them, or we pinned them with Wonder Clips, so we clipped them uh, yesterday. So all we have to do is sew them, and then that's it. Uh, we uh, at, at that point we can we can uh, we'll press it, but after that we will be able to sandwich the pieces together and make this into a quilt. So I do have my. Um, my batting here, I am going to, over the weekend, I'm going to lay this out so it can relax for a few days. Uh, just because uh, if you let it, if you open the batting beforehand and let it just chill for a little while, some of those folds and stuff will relax. Uh, that's the theory at least. So uh, I'm going to do that over the weekend. And I'm hoping Monday we might be able to press this and then... Uh, get started on the quilting of this this guy. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that. So it's not going to take too long tonight to do the, uh, to sew those two seams, just the top and the bottom. They're already pinned. Uh, so I thought we could play with uh, some, some uh, tassels for a little. So I have a sale going on now for my new embroidery kits. Uh, there's links for that here for my embroidery kit sale. It's only through t tomorrow. It ends at the end of the day tomorrow. And the llama is one of the kits here. But I did a video uh, two days ago. Actually, I think yesterday. I did a video yesterday uh, for how to do this like yarn wrapped hoop with these little tassels. And I had some questions about the tassels, so I thought we could play around with that tonight. I'll show you how I made these tassels. And I saw a fun thing on YouTube to make tassels just right off, of, right out of a little skein of embroidery floss, and I kind of want to try that too. So I will show you how I made these tassels, and we'll make the smaller version out of the skein of embroidery floss. So we'll, we'll putz around with that a little bit tonight. And then tomorrow is Finish It Friday, and Finish It Friday is the first Friday of the month. We stop everything we're doing, stop whatever project we're working on, and break out another project, one of our unfinished projects. So that's what we'll do tomorrow. I am going to break out my my splendid sampler quilt, which is still not done. I have to quilt the the border yet. So I thought we could do a little bit of that, see how far uh, we can um, get on the quilting of the border. I don't know how far we'll get, but man, it's been a long time since I worked on that. So a few finish it Fridays and we'll have that splendid sampler done. I can't believe I don't have it done yet. It's been, you know, we started it years ago here on Facebook Live and uh, it's been at least probably a year since I've worked on it, or at least six months or so since I've worked on it. And all it needs is a few straight line stitches in the border and a binding put on it. And I can't believe it's just, it's sitting in a bin right now. So I brought that up and I'm ready to work on that tomorrow for Finish It Friday. So if you guys have a project uh, that you want to do for Finish It Friday, uh, bring that here tomorrow and we can work on those unfinished projects together. But tonight I'm gonna start, I'm gonna sew those seams and we'll make some tassels here. So that's the plan. Uh, thanks again for joining me, everyone. I'll flip you around and let's just get this sewing done and out of the way. All right, I am all set up to sew Oop, right away here. Um, one thing I do have that TV tray by me here. So now I have the table that the sewing machine is on and now I have a TV tray right here and that's where I'm going to lay the bulk, just like the heaviness of all this fabric while I sew. So I have it kind of set up already so I can just start here and it'll accordion style um, 
just keep coming up. Um, I got it kind of stacked so it will flow nicely. But right now, I can even show you over on my left here. There we go. So see the table is here and then my, my um, TV tray is right here. And that TV tray is supporting all of this bulk. And man, has that made a difference. Like more of a difference than I thought. Like I thought it would be still sliding off and I'd still have to, I'd still have to support a lot of the bulk on, you know, my shoulder or my lap or something. But no, it is like all on there and it, it's just really making the sewing easy. So we will definitely keep that going here. Keep that uh, TV tray here for when we start quilting. But yeah, that's... That's been making a huge, huge difference. Like I said, more more than I thought. All these little tricks are making making more of a difference than I thought. All right, sorry guys, I'm wiggling a little bit just to get situated here. Okay, let's get going. But yeah, right now I am not supporting any of the oop, geez, any of the fabric on on my body at all. It's it's all being supported by by that uh, TV tray. So I'm digging that. Thanks, Mariana. Yeah, we're cruising. Like I I I'm just so excited that we're this far with this quilt. Um, and I I am so in love with this quilt right now. Uh, I love what we did for the back. I love the front, how kind of organized it is. And then the back, um, how it's just like a variation on the front. So I'm just gonna put my Wonder Clips back into my little little bin as I go here. And this red, I can't believe how many things I'm using this red for lately. I'm not sure why that is. But I still like it, I like this red. It's funny because this isn't, I feel like this isn't a color I would naturally be prone to using, but man, all my projects lately have this red in. I think my table's not quite straight here. Yeah, so tonight um, will be a little quick. I'm excited for tomorrow though. Um, finish it Friday. I brought my, I have a bin that has both the Splendid Sampler unfinished project in and the I Love Home quilt, <laughs> which isn't done either. Um, so it's just sad seeing it again. Like, oh man, you're not, you're not finished yet. So I think I'm going to take a little break this weekend. I need to clean up the house a little bit and I want to get uh, my husband's great grandma's sewing machine working and then I might just um, watch some movies and sit outside and, and get some um, get some projects worked on a little bit. I'm All these unfinished projects are starting to you know eke me out again. All right, I think we're about halfway with this side. Oh, first time watching. Thanks for joining, Gracie. Uh, what type of sewing machine am I using? I am using my mom's Kenmore sewing machine, like the Sears Kenmore sewing machine, uh, and it's, a, it's from the 70s. So it's a 70s um, Kenmore. Yeah, good old vitamin D. Uh, so, Oh, you're excited for the tassel making. You're making ornaments for graduation gifts and want to dress them with tassels. Oh, yes. So easy and fun to um, dress them up. Yeah, so, um, you know, the vitamin D from, from, the, from the sunshine. So today, I had all these plans of getting a ton of stuff done, right? As one does during the day. Um, so I worked in the morning, but then... Um, I had lunch and I'm like, you know what, before I get cracking for the afternoon, uh, I had a, a, library, a library book on reserve at my library that came in. So 
Um, I don't know how your guys' library system works, but I just love it here in Minneapolis. So in Minneapolis, you can't walk two miles without being in the radius of a library, which is amazing. And they're all hooked up into the same Minneapolis system. So you can go onto the website and uh, um, look for a book. And if the book is at one of these other libraries, they will bring it to your library or whatever library, whatever your library you tell it to. And uh, so what I do when I hear about a book or, you know, yeah, if there's, a, if there's a, something I'm interested, I will just uh, find that book on the website, and a lot of times it's not in, so I get on the waiting list, and then I just, and you know, that's fine, and then they send me an email when the book is in, and I have like five days to go pick it up or something. So I had a book come in, and I thought, you know what, it is gorgeous outside, insanely, insanely beautiful, gorgeous. I want it to be like this forever. It was like 73 degrees or something and sunny, gorgeous, it smelled like spring and birds. I don't know, everything was so perfect. So I'm like, you know what, before I get cracking for the afternoon, I am gonna walk to the library. And the library is like, I don't know, it's probably two miles away. So it's like a two mile walk or a one and a half miles or something there and then, then back. So it's a little bit of a walk, but I'm like, you know what? I'm walking to the library. So I walked to the library. I had lunch, walked to the library, got my book, walked back, and I uh, fell asleep on the couch for the rest of the afternoon. So I, I don't know, all that sunshine, you know, I have not had sunshine in, this, in like eight months or something stupid, right? So I just feel like anytime I go outside now, I just get like drained immediately. So I couldn't believe it though. I was, I was ready to work, got back and then woke up, you know, hours later. So it was a little ridiculous today. Um, so I gotta get back on it tomorrow because I basically lost half a day. But you know what? Sometimes that you just gotta do that, right? <laughs> and it's fine. I worked all weekend last weekend, so I feel like I feel like um, you know, I I need a little I needed a nap, you know. Sometimes you just need a nap. Exactly, Gretchen. But holy cow, was it just so beautiful out. Man. I don't know. I'm loving it. That's the one thing when you when you um, live in a place where you don't have that all the time. When when you do get the beautiful weather, it is just you need to suck it all in, you know. Had all the windows open. Yep, all the snow is melted, Deborah. We've had a few. We even had a like close to an eighty degree day, and um, you know it's been mid sixties to seventies. Uh, for the whole week. Oh, God, it's been beautiful. Um, so, yep, no more snow. You can tell that there used to be snow because now there's piles of salt in places and, you know, the remnants of snow. And, the, and you know, sometimes they'll push, the, like in a parking lot, they'll push all the snow in one area. So now those areas, those areas might have a little bit of snow yet, but it's mostly just really dirty mounds of, I don't know, sand and whatever else. Um, so yeah, you can tell that snow has existed, um, <laughs> but I don't think there's any actual snow. All right, I just rotated this uh, 180 degrees, so now I'm, I'm working on that the other side. I don't know if we started on the top or the bottom, but this is one or the other, and we pinned both sides, so I can just keep sewing. Whether like that is when toddlers play outside all day and then and then fall asleep in their dinner. Yep, it is. Um, that was basically me, Bonnie. I came home from the library and I'm like, you know what? I'm really thirsty. I'm going to have a water and, oh, look, there's a grapefruit here. And I ate my grapefruit and then zonked out on the couch. <laughs> so, yeah, I basically fell asleep eating just about... <clears throat> 
then my husband called, um, he was, he was, um, working somewhere off site and he called and I'm like, oh dang, I've been asleep on the couch. <laughs> Got nothing done today. That's not true. I got a lot done in the morning. So I did get up earlier than usual because I was expecting a potentially early delivery. Um, and last time that they delivered early, I was in my pajamas. So I, I didn't want to have that happen again. So I got up extra early, got ready. Um, so it's been a weird day as far as habits and routines go anyway. So I don't know. But that sunshine, man. Ugh. So beautiful. Yep, and doing something now. Exactly, Gretchen. <laughs> so I did get a lot done in the morning. But, you know, everyone's got their big to-do list and everything, and that didn't all happen. Yeah, the entirety of the weight of this is on that, that um, TV stand. This is fabulous. I'm really really liking that a ton. And I, I got that TV stand from, from Target a while back, and um, we just use it occasionally for extra table-y type things, and yeah, it's working great. I, I wasn't sure it would fit up here because I'm working in such a small space, but it fits perfectly, and wow, I can already tell that it's gonna... Gonna be good for, for this quilting once we, we get to that. So Monday we will, um, ooh, I think we're out of bobbin. <laughs> ah, we are. Um, we're using a bobbins, which is kind of goofy, but I, I feel good about it. This kind of, this quilt is kind of all about using up stuff that I had instead of kind of buying new stuff. Um, but lately I've been using up bobbins. <laughs> Just random colors of bobbins. When we start quilting, I'll use a different bobbin. Man, this has barely any on. I wonder if this will get us to the end. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try this one. This one might not quite get us there. Wait till you're free motion quilting and you'll be really able to appreciate the little table. That's, I mean, that's what I'm hoping, Deborah. I mean, I can tell just from here that that's gonna be a hugely awesome decision. So, yeah. Thanks for the suggestion, guys. I'm, I'm loving it so far. So I'm hoping this teeny bit of thread will get me to, to the end. But look, we, I, th I think we basically used up. Um, we emptied like at least five of these working on, on the back of this quilt, which I'm feeling really good about. Because, you know, I don't know, when are you going to use all these bobbins? You have to be like sewing with that exact color and stuff. So um, it's kind of fun just using whatever color and using it up. You know, ideally I would use red on both the bobbin and the top um, just because, you know, I'm sewing with a lot of red here. But it's the back and I'm okay with just using these random things. Um, when it comes to quilting, though, I will, I will use reds. So I have, I have a few kind of reddish things. I'm still going to use up just random stuff that I have, but um, it will be, it will make more sense than some of these random colors I'm using for this sewing. All right, let's hope this, uh, this bobbin makes it to the end. Ooh, string piecing is good for using up bobbins. That's a good idea. You know, I think all these these new old machines that I have that I'm setting up now, like I want to set up all these machines to function, right? So I'm setting up my husband's grandma's, uh, great grandma's Singer 1920, I think 1927 Singer sewing machine. It's a Singer 66, um, like a converted treadle sewing machine. So it's, it's electric. Um, but I'm setting that up in my office, like where my computer is. And uh, um, I'm so excited for that because, you know, if I'm, you know, working on a project or writing some emails and I just need two seconds, I can just sew 
sew like two seams or something. Sew two pieces of fabric together and then get back to the emails or something, get back to writing or whatever I'm doing on the computer. Um, you know, so I'll have that little teeny respite there with it all out. Yeah, so like string piecing or something. Like I'll have some project out that I can just sew one piece to another piece. I'm really excited for that. And then I want another, you know, I got that cool Kenmore from the late 30s. I think that was 37 or 30, 39 maybe, I forget. Um, or 38, <laughs> I don't know. But that cool um, sewing machine with that, that black matte crinkle finish. Oh, I just think it's so cool. So I have that set up in the living room now but I'd love a project to hang out there as well. So I can just pop that open and sew in, sew in the living room and stuff too. So um, the problem is I think all of these machines have different styles of bobbin. <laughs> so I won't be able to just um, throw any bobbin in there to use it up. So I don't know. This is the only machine that I think I can use up those bobbins on. I'll have to check, but yeah, I think I'm, I think I have bobbin um, compatibility issues with the other ones. I'll have to see. But I have faith we'll use them all up eventually, for sure. So I'm trying to ease this a little bit because you can see we have a little bit of a bulk, so I'm just trying to kind of pull on it a little bit as it sews through to take care of that, but I don't know. If we're just that far, I mean, it's not much of an ease issue here, um, so I don't think we'll really have a problem. I'm almost to the end. You know, and, you know, a good English paper piecing project or something, too, would be a way to use up some bobbins, just use up the thread from the bobbins um, for the hand, hand sewing. All right, yeah, we got a little bunching here, but oh well. Not the end of the world, it's not, not much. Okay, but that is it for the top here. We had enough thread, which is nice. So I'm just gonna just trim off those leaders. I think I got them kind of all over the place here. And then we will play a little bit with tassels. I'll show you how I make the tassels. So this is, it. if you watched my video from a day or two ago, um, I did, I did send an email out today. So if you guys, um, if you guys got my email today, or if you didn't, check your emails, um, or sign up to my emails, and you'll get them in the future. Um, you can do that on my website at penguinandfish.com. But in the email, I, I showed a, just like a recap of all the videos that I did this week, this past week. I did a bunch of videos, and the last one has um, the tassels on. So here, we're done with this now. I'm gonna set this aside. And I'm actually gonna set this aside too because it's just reflecting a lot of light here. All right, and we'll just shimmy, shimmy over here a little bit. Um, oh, you got the email, love the tutorials. Oh, thanks, Gretchen. Uh, yeah, so I'll show you how I made the tassels on this, um, my llama kit here. So here's here's the little llama again. He's got his own little tassels and stuff. So I thought it would be cute to add tassels to the bottom. So this is just like a super duper easy way to do to do tassels. And um, so I got some yarn out here. So this is um, I got some just some tealy blue yarn, and this is the same same style of yarn as this. It's just a different color that I had. Um, so this is um, getting to be kind of a bulky weight yarn, and you can do tassels in whatever you want. So I'm going to do a tassel with this this green as well here. Um, I just think it'll be fun. 
I haven't done it before with with embroidery floss, but I've seen it, so I kind of wanted to give it a try. Um, so we'll we'll do that next. But this is it's super easy. So this is how um, I do it. You just um, you can have you can get little devices to help you with tassels, but you know for just something quick, something just really easy and quick where you don't need a lot of gadgets, you can just wrap it around your fingers. So I just kind of wrap it around all four fingers until I get like a nice thick um, nice thick um, loops here. So however fluffy you want it. We'll go around a little bit more. I'm not sure about that. Oh, <laughs> did you hear that? The Alexa started talking, talking to me. All right. So like so, and then I'm gonna just trim it at the bottom. So I already forgot a step. I, before, before I start, I always cut like about a 12 inch piece of thread or of, of yarn here. And you're gonna take that piece and you know, we just did all these loops. You can kind of see through your fingers. We're just gonna thread that through the fingers till it comes out the other side there and we're gonna pull it up towards the top. So we're gonna kinda of equal out those threads here and pull it to the top like that. Then we can just let it, let it be and I'm just gonna tie a knot there. So this is just kinda of grouping, grouping everything at the top. Tie it again. So this, this thread, this right here will ultimately be what we um, use to tie it on to whatever else we're doing it. Like if we're making garland, we would tie tie um, the garland on here. Or, you know, here I tied, I use that thread to tie it to, to my hoop here. So, all right, after you got that, next up you wanna cut another piece of, of like, you know, about 12 inches, eight to 12 inches. Um, really you want it kind of as long as your loops plus a little extra to tie the knot and you know longer is better because you can always cut it off right you can't grow it but you can cut it off so I lay that down on my table there and I just place my loops on top with you still want you still want the, these going upwards and then we'll just tie that in a knot. And I usually do it, you know, we're a little, maybe a little less than an inch from, from the top. You know, right there or so, and we just pull it tight. Nope, oh, you know what? My loops are a little goofy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get picky on it. Let's just, let's comb these guys down so they're all all pretty and um, you know, all kind of lined up there. Now we'll do that again. There, that's, that's a little bit prettier. So we're gonna just tie that tight. Just tying it in like two little knots here. All right, and really you can stop there, but what I like to do is, you know, from these knots, they're kind of like pointing at weird angles and stuff. So I like to tuck those in and I have just this big kind of like yarn. Um, it's like, like a darning needle or something or just like a big um, yarn needle. So it's huge. You can see. So I'll show you. Uh, let's get let's get Zeb out here. Here we got Zeb with all my needles. Um, so this is this is the embroidery needle that we've been using for embroidery. And here is this huge yarn needle. So if you just Google or go to Amazon and, and just um, type in yarn needle, something like this is gonna pop up. So the key features of it is that the, the eye is big enough that it can fit yarn yarn through it, or like, you know, this is some bulky yarn. It will be able to fit, fit that yarn through. And it's got a blunt point. So um, it's not sharp. Like this would not go through fabric very easily unless it has a really wide weave. Um, you know, it, it's meant so you don't tear up all the fibers of, of the yarn with a sharp point. You just wanna kind of get it in there. And so the blunt, blunt point. So blunt point, large eye, and that will do the job. So all I do is, you know, those two little flanges from the two yarn ends from what we just did, I am going to just 
tuck those in. So this one is kind of going upwards. Let's just thread that through our big giant needle here. And you know, a Joann's or Michael's or something, Hobby Lobby, that'll all have these, these two. So what I'm doing is I'm going from the top. These are gonna become some of our loopies down here. Oh yes, so yes, exactly. So that I think that's the that actual intention for that, Deborah, is these are meant to use for weaving in yarn ends when knitting or crocheting or whatever. Um, it's good for, for that. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're kind of um, weaving in our ends. So I want everything to end up downward because these, these ends are gonna become part of the tassel. So I'm going from the up, up um, to down through that loop that we tied around there. There we go. So now it's all of a sudden feels integrated into our loops. And I'm gonna just do that to the other one too. Even though it's kind of already facing downward, I want it to feel like it's tucked underneath this um, loop like all the other ones are. So I'm gonna thread that one as well. Oops, that's not the side. I'm like, where's, where's the eye of the needle? It's over here. All right, so again, I'm just gonna go from up to down just anywhere, anywhere in the middle here. There we go, give that a little tug. There we go, so now our two tied pieces are hanging, hanging down here. So now all we have to do is cut all these loops. Uh, you can do that with, you know, the embroidery scissors or a bigger scissors would work really well. So I'm just going through, cutting, cutting the loops at the end, you know, make sure you don't miss any. You can also just take a scissors and just snip across it. So like if I wanted a shorter tassel, um, I could just cut them all a little shorter. Um, you know, maybe we'll just, I'll show you how to do that. But you know, if, if this is the length that you want your tassel, you know, just make sure to trim it all down. You know, if there's any little ends popping out that you don't like, trim those. There's a little guy there maybe. And, and there you go. And yeah, if you want it just a little shorter, then you can get a little heftier scissors out and just keep, keep trimming or something, you know? We'll do a big, quick trim. Ha, there. Nice flat bottom there. <laughs> there, so that's, that's it. That's, that's um, like the super duper easy way to, to make a tassel. So just really easy peasy. And then all I did for, for the hoop is, you know, I just wrapped yarn around this, but when I was done, I just um, took, took these right here without the inside on, when it's still the outside, I tied, tied a knot on the inside of the hoop and then just wove in the ends again with, um, with my little yarn needle, needle here. So yeah, that's all there is to it. Fun little tassels you can put in anything. And I love these, um, this is like a bulky wool roving type yarn. And uh, these would just be great on like the ends of a blanket or the tips of a pillow, the corners of a pillow would be just really fun. Um, you can use these ends right here to do like weave it to the inside of the pillow and tie the knots on the inside of the pillow so it's, it's attached well there. But yeah, so easy peasy. Um, just really quick way to decorate something up with these, these little tassels. And uh, I just wanted to try something. Um, I haven't done this before, but I wanted to try doing one with the, the uh, embroidery floss. So I've seen this done. First, I'm gonna cut, cut a piece off. So I'm just finding an end here. I'm just gonna pull, pull a little piece of thread through and we'll snip that off. So same sort of thing. So you can just kind of pull the, um, these little labels down a little bit, but then just fold it in half, fold the whole thing in half. And we are gonna just tie our knot at the top again. You know, I'm kind of thinking I should pull two, two threads out right away. So I'm gonna pull another thread out There we go. There we go. You'd prefer doing all kinds of various projects than this one simple. 
Oh yeah, it was tons of work. So we will, we, I, I don't know if we'll be doing the splendid sampler yet, but um, even if we do, we will definitely do other projects. We're not going to do the splendid sampler in the same way that we did last time where we only work on that because yeah, it is a ton of work. Um, and yeah, it's just a lot. So I want to do some other things as well. So all right, I just folded this in half and now we're going to do the, kind of the same thing we did before. We're going to tie this in a knot at the top. Tie it again. And now we can kind of just do the same thing. We can um, tie a knot with the second thread. Yeah, I learned a ton on the first one and that's why I would like to kind of do the second one because, you know, I, I feel like, I feel like I have more to offer <laughs> the second one because I'm a little bit better with, with all the sewing stuff on the second one compared to, compared to the first one. Um, but yeah, I definitely, there's so many more projects that I would like to do too and that kind of, um, that took up our time for like a good year doing the first one and I don't want it to take up our, all of our time the second time around. All right, I just tied my little knot there and I'm going to um, grab my embroidery needle this time and I'm just gonna tuck, tuck in the thread, same way, going from top to bottom. I think this is so fun that you can do this with just a skein, a skein of floss. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Holly. It's just a really big commitment. Um, and that's why I'm a little hesitant to it too, just because it is a big commitment. But I just know that it's a lot of people could use some help with doing all that stuff. And, and I know that um, I think I think we could help them a lot here. Just, yeah, feeling more confident in doing it with the videos. All right, so now at this point, I'm just gonna shimmy these guys off. And we are going to just cut across the bottom. I don't need, I'm not even gonna deal with the loops. I'm gonna just grab, grab the big scissors. Pop that off there. And here we got a cute little, um, just embroidery floss. This is one skein of embroidery floss. And you can actually replace replace this knot up here with a jump ring. So that's that, those metal circles used in jewelry. And then it could be a zipper pull or something. But there's one other thing I wanted to try with this that I've seen. So I have, I have like, I have a hairbrush here. And I'm just gonna brush, brush on these, um, the fibers here a little bit. So what we're actually kind of doing is we're splitting those six strands of embroidery floss into all their little individual strands. And I think it's just gonna make, it's gonna make this just even more kind of elegant and you'll see all the little strands, but there you can start seeing them split. And there we go. So there we go. We kind of, we split all those strands and look, now it's just like really silky and, and pretty. <laughs> uh, so and I think maybe I need to trim it up a little bit more. There's a few little ends now. But there we go. Isn't that fun? So yeah, this would make a great zipper pull um, or for anything really. And it was, it was just like a little skein of floss. So anyway, fun with tassels, fun with tassels tonight. Um, uh, there are some tassel makers and I am gonna play with those soon here too. So uh, when, I, when I get some of those in, I'll show you how to use a tassel, tassel maker and that might make things um, you know, even easier too. <laughs> you could probably use, oh yeah, oh gosh. Yeah, you could use two colors together. Oh yeah, so I, that would have been fun. Like I have, um, you know, if we did both of these together or something, we'd have like this super fat tassel um, that, yeah, it would be really, really pretty and, and big. And, you know, if we shorten this up, then it'll be like this really nice poofy, 
poofy guy too. But I love um, just splitting those threads. Look how just silky it looks like from splitting, splitting all those threads up. But all right, guys, I think we'll call it a night there. I know it was a pretty quick night tonight. Um, but uh, tomorrow, finish it Friday, we will work on the Splendid Sampler again, and then we can talk talk more. We can debate whether we should do it or not. And and again, I don't, I don't know if I'll be able to yet. I'm working on getting permission um, or just seeing if, if it's okay or not to do that. So anyway, I will um, flip you guys around. Oh, and I just wanted to remind you guys that... My sale for the new embroidery kits, uh, it's up on my website at, at penguinandfish.com under kits. And I'll also send out emails tomorrow reminding you guys, just because tomorrow is the last day. Um, there's there's like percentages off and bonuses and, and all that. So that's, um, this llama is one of the new patterns. And um, if you haven't ordered yet, um, you can check it out there at Penguin and Fish and uh, check your emails tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to flip you guys around now. And if you have ordered already, thank you so much. You guys are amazing. I appreciate it just a ton. Um, I'm just excited to have them out in the world. And it, I'm just so happy to see that you guys like the patterns and, and uh, want to play with them and stuff. These would be cute earrings. Boop. That'd be fun. I don't ever wear earrings, really, but... Those would be cute! Just put a little jump ring, a little, um, you know, one of those metal circles on there, and then attach that to the, the earring part. And that would be a legit fancy earring <laughs> for going out. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks again for joining me. I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. And, yep, we'll work on the Splendid Sampler uh, tomorrow. I'm working on that, on that border. Uh, quilting the border and uh, I'm gonna use one of those um, oh, I don't even know what it's called. I'll show you tomorrow I'm gonna use a new gadget for the sewing machine um, that I haven't used uh, before so it'll be fun So all right, have a great evening guys, and I will see you tomorrow Good night <laughs>